today. I have a few announcements in the life of the church I'd like to share. Uh, the first thing is we are preparing a newsletter to send that out here in the next few weeks. Um, the deadline for getting information to Linda will be January 31st. So that's next Sunday. So if you have something, that would be a very convenient time if you have to drop it off. Otherwise, email it to her. All her flowers will start again on Sunday, March the 7th. And as you can see, it's been a little bit bare up here for some time uh, due to extenuating circumstances. But we are going to try and start bringing that color back here on March 7th. Also want to let everybody know, on Transfiguration Sunday, that would be February 14th, we will be celebrating Holy Communion that day. Uh, we are going to try a different product. You'll still come forward, uh, so there'll be a shade bit of a learning curve to how we're going to do this with the item, but uh, it'll have both elements in one container. So uh, just giving you a heads up for that. Folks I know have been missing taking communion, and we're hoping that this will maybe allow us to do it more frequently. Uh, the last thing I have here is uh, Greg is going to have a temple talk next Sunday to present during the time of announcements. Now, I'm saying, I'm giving you a week's notice, and I'm letting you know that this is something that I encourage you to listen very closely to, whether you're here or out there in TV land. And I need you to think about it, and I need you to pray about it. it it's that serious, it's that concerning, and we need the church, our church, to swing back into action, especially in the areas of fundraising. So I need you to pray about that this week and hear what Greg has to say. All right, are there any other announcements this morning? All right. If you're able, please rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and help us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living in Christ's love and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. And strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Sure. And while you were out there, 
Did a great fish ever try to bite you? Let alone eat you? Probably not. Well, the backstory here is that the sailors on the ship had to make a tough, life-altering decision to throw a man overboard. That would be Jonah. To save themselves. Even stranger, when Jonah was finally thrown overboard, the sea calmed down immediately. The storm disappeared. And the sailors, in deep fear, responded by making sacrifices to the Lord and took vows. In other words, they worshipped God and made promises to be better people. Now I'm pretty sure that as adults, just about every one of us out there has been at that point in our lives. You know the situation. Unfortunate choices are made and sickness overwhelms us. And in that moment, at its worst, we start bargaining with God. Oh, please, I'll do anything, just let me feel better. <laughs> then, just when the story seems to take this terrible turn and hints at the end of Jonah's life, something amazing and unbelievable happens. And this time again, it's the Lord who is completely responsible for all that happens. Now, we don't know for sure how deep Jonah sank into the waters before the Lord intervened. But it couldn't have been too deep, or else he would certainly have run out of breath. The Lord showed up at the perfect time and did what seems to be completely scientifically impossible in our world today. To this day, it cannot be explained. In fact, the unexplainable, that's what we call miracles. The verse said the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Did the Lord create a special fish just for this purpose? Was there a fish that could have swallowed a human whole back then, that is now extinct? Or was the action of swallowing a miracle as well? We don't know for sure, but one thing is clear, the Lord is behind it. The same Lord who was responsible for bringing the storm to the Mediterranean Sea was now responsible for Jonah being rescued. Of course, if being eaten by a big fish whole is indeed being rescued. This is just one more event in the Bible that tells me God truly has a sense of humor. At first reading or hearing this story, it doesn't sound like this was a good act of God to prepare a fish to swallow Jonah, because there's nothing positive sounding about a man being swallowed whole by a fish. Yes, Jonah disobeyed God's commands, but did it warrant Jonah becoming lunch? And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, is how it's written. These words paint an unbelievable picture that the life of Jonah is not over yet. And his job for God isn't done. For at least another three days and three nights in this very strange place in the belly of this big fish, God wanted Jonah to think through the wrong choices that he made and figure this out for himself. God gave him plenty of time to reconsider his motives and actions. We've never heard of anyone else except Jonah spending days and nights in the belly of a fish. One would imagine that one's life would end right there at the mouth of the fish. Considering the movie Jaws here, of course, we're all familiar with that, to thereby end up alive inside the fish for those days and nights. Just imagine for a moment, if it is even possible, what he's experiencing. Put yourself there. 
He's rolling around in the belly of the fish with all kinds of other stuff floating around him, yet he's still alive. And I'm sure that the fish wasn't stationary. It was moving constantly, as fish do. And it's got to be pitch black. And I can only think where he's thinking. Despite what Jonah thought about his life's mission, purpose, and the duration of it, despite what the sailors thought would happen to Jonah when they threw him over into the sea, it does not seem like the Lord thought Jonah's life's mission and ministry were over quite yet. Jonah had a job to do for God, and he was going to do it. Is it not the same with us at times? Certainly not the fish, but the situation. We might feel like we are done, job complete. We've fulfilled our purpose. We've done all we were supposed to do. Time to go home. But then the Lord does something to let us know that he's not done with us yet. He still has plans for us to become and to accomplish something else, something more for him, and he'll do anything and everything he must to help us accomplish that task. Even if he has to perform a miracle to make it happen. Take a moment and think about yourselves. Have you become all that the Lord intended you to become? Have you grown matured, and accomplished all that he intended for you to do? No, not yet. God has much in store for you and me. Now we think a step bigger. What about our church? Have we become all that the Lord intended for us to become when he established the church at large 2,000 years ago? Have we accomplished all that he intended for us to do? Though the answer is obviously a resounding no, not yet, let's remember that the Lord is not done with the church yet. God does not give up on people. People give up on people, and sadly people give up on God, but God never gives up on us. And thank God he does not give up on us because I probably wouldn't be here today sharing this time and this message with you had he given up on me. <clears throat> and I'm guessing for a lot of you, there's an amen in that. The Lord will in love correct us so that we, he can get us back on track, becoming and fulfilling all that he desires for us. Even if that means sending someone or something unconventional turn us around, and bring us back. The words three days and three nights remind us of another person who spent three days and nights in a smelly, dark place, but came back to life, and for the most amazing reason. Jesus himself said, for as Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus did not spend that time in the heart of the earth because of any sin he committed, but instead it was because he was taking away our sin. He was taking our place. Jesus did this for us so that someday we would be able to go to heaven and be with God the Father forever. He paid the price for our sins. He did it for us, so we didn't have to. We were spared, rescued, and saved in a most unconventional way. All we need to do is believe that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins, which is death. Though that sounds like a sad ending, the truth is that he arose from the dead and is alive forevermore. He is willing to change your life forever, to forgive your sins, and to give you freedom from the bondage and slavery of sin, and then to enable you to live a new life. He does.
does this by giving all of us his Holy Spirit to live inside of us and to help us live that new life every day. Jonah remained alive for those days and nights. He was spared, and then he was blessed. And that really is the amazing part of this story. You see, when God wants to keep someone alive, no one can stop him. And that was certainly the case for Jonah. God loves each and every one of us. He will rescue us in our time of need. That rescue may not come in a way that you choose or expect, but he promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, certainly after hearing this, there could be some doubt. Well, if you don't believe me, if you're saying to yourself, God wouldn't be interested in my little life, how could he possibly have anything for me to do for him? Well, just ask Jonah about his experience with God. It's a whale of a tale. <laughs> Amen.
reconciling love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God would raise up honest stewards to guide our care for all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, distressed or grieving, for the outcast, and for all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. We lift up to you today the needs and concerns of Wanda Groom, Marianne Markowitz, Roger Roganalt, Wayne Mingle, Andy Beaver, Darv Krauss, Jane Faust, Delroy Moser, Bonnie Marr, Bakudoff. And Lord, now we also share with you those burdens and needs on our hearts today. Touch and heal each of these as no other can. Lord, in your mercy. We raise up to you the families of Ethel Hemrick Yo and Shirley Kennelly at their passing this week. We ask you, Lord, to bring comfort and peace to their ailing hearts. Lord, in your mercy. And we raise up to you our joys and celebrations with the birthdays of Betty Hensinger, Doris Mertz, Sheila Moser, Joni Harrison, Dylan Cizurek, Molly Moser, Karen Trimble, Dahlia Bell. Bless each one of these folks richly in this joyous time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of the gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ and Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, Hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day. upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 